My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to show you just a couple quick things in QuickBooks Online. I want to talk to you today about how sometimes QuickBooks Online doesn't match your online bank balance, uh, even though all your transactions are entered. And I just want to walk you through a couple ways that that happens so that you can um, catch and correct it in your own file. I'm currently in the QuickBooks Online test drive file. If you're not currently using QuickBooks Online or if you want to experiment with things without messing up your own QuickBooks, I encourage you to check out the test drive file. To get to it, all you'll need to do is just Google or Bing search QuickBooks Online test drive. The URL you want to click on is this top URL where it says qbo.intuit.com and then redirect in test drive. The link for it, the blue hyperlink, will often say test drive QuickBooks Online. So it's almost always near the top. Okay, so I'm in the test drive file. I've added some transactions to make this example work. This is the sort of question that clients come to me with on a pretty regular basis. And I thought, how great would it be if I just showed you what's happening so that if this does happen to you, um, you might be able to troubleshoot it on your own. It may not work perfectly. And if you get stuck, I'm always here to help you. But I do want to kind of show you what's happening. So what will happen is you'll get these tiles, right? The checking, the savings, and the MasterCard. And the checking tile will say your bank balance is a number. And your QuickBooks will say your, your register balance is a different number. And then it'll say there's nothing left to enter, that everything has been entered into QuickBooks. And you don't understand why the top number and the bottom number don't match. So what's happening? The top number, in this case, um, our fictitious bank balance, it, it says that our bank balance, if we were to log into online banking, is negative $3,600. I don't know about your bank, but my bank will not let me go negative $3,600. But that's what it is for our sample file, so we're just going to roll with it. Then in QuickBooks, QuickBooks Register says that our balance is six, um, negative $652. So unless I have a bunch of outstanding checks, these two numbers should be the same. What I have here is data that's in QuickBooks that is not in my bank. And I just want to look over my QuickBooks data and see if I can figure out what's going on. Is it something that I haven't taken to the bank yet? Is it something someone else hasn't taken to the bank yet? Or is there any chance that perhaps I made a mistake and just double entered something? I fully understand that this data is getting downloaded and theoretically these numbers should match. I also understand this is a question that I answer on a very regular basis. So if this has happened to you, rest assured it's normal. And if you get stuck, I can walk you through it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go to the register for our checking account. Since we're already on the screen, I'm going to take the shortcut of clicking on go to the register. The go to register hyperlink is in the middle of your screen on the right hand side. It's a blue hyperlink that says go to register. So now I'm at my checking register and there's all kinds of things that I see here. So I'm just going to walk you through what I see. First, it's sorted in date order with the newest on top. It's some place in here. I'm sure you can figure out that I'm recording this in September and somehow magically a deposit from the future from October is in here. And not only is it in here, it's also cleared the bank. So it's going to be just a little bit of make believe land when we work in the sample file. When I look to the right hand side, I see a couple things. The green box means that it's added from bank feeds and the C means that it's tentatively cleared. So I'm going to take you a step back and show you what that means real quick. When I click on banking and I have these transactions, if I click match or add or whatever the case is, and I'm not organizing these properly, whenever I do that, when I go to the register, it's going to have this green box that says, uh, manually add, added from bank feeds, meaning that I as the human added it. And then it's also going to say tentatively cleared. When I click the reconcile button in the upper right hand corner, it takes me to the screen allowing me to reconcile my account. So we're going to pretend that our ending balance is $4,900 and that the statement date is today. I'm going to click on start reconciling and when I come into here, I'm going to see that 16 payments have already been checked off and 8 deposits have been checked off. That means as I scroll down, there's some stuff that's pre-checked. This isn't stuff I pre-checked in advance of the video. 
This is stuff that QuickBooks pre-checked for us because it's data that downloaded from the bank. And so QuickBooks said, if this downloaded from the bank, I'm going to, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to help you as the human by pre-checking these things. Now, theoretically, our difference would be $0 in our account would just reconcile. Um, it's not going to just reconcile because I made up a number. I made up the 4900 to show you the screen. So when it says tentatively reconciled, all it means is that there's this little check mark here. If you try to reconcile and you can't and it's frustrating, it's not working, you can always click on this drop down in the upper right hand corner and say close without saving. So I'm going to go back to the bank register and continue on with my mission. So I have these things that are tentatively reconciled. That means they got the check mark in the reconcile screen. And I have these green boxes. I can't add the green box. I can add the tentatively reconcile by going to the reconcile screen and either checking or not checking things. So what I want to do is I want to isolate um, anything that could be causing my bank register, this negative 652, to not match the, the number in my bank account, the negative 3600. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, is there anything that's really old that maybe didn't reconcile? So I come to the upper left-hand corner of my screen and I click on this little funnel filter guy. When I click on it, it expands and op opens up options for us. And I want to filter for reconcile status, not reconciled. And then I click the green apply. So now what I can see is anything that's not reconciled in my bank account. So there's a bunch of stuff here. So we're in September as I record this video. There's some September stuff and there's some August stuff. What we don't see up here in this blank space, we don't see when the account was last reconciled. When you're doing this in your own QuickBooks, you're going to see when your account was last reconciled. And then you'll know some of the stuff, for example, the August stuff, it's here because you just haven't reconciled your August statement. So that's nothing to worry about. But when we get further down, we're going to see other stuff and then we're going to start to think about it and investigate and research. So I added some stuff in here to show you what happens. Bob's Burger Joint is definitely one of the things I've added. So here we've got $50.00 in January, again, this is September. So eight months ago, we spent $50 at Bob's Burger Joints and it never cleared the bank. We received $900 from Cool Cars, that never cleared the bank. We have a bill payment to Robertson's and Associates for $300, that never cleared the bank. We got money from Bill's Wind and Surf Shop, never cleared the bank. So I'm just gonna walk through hypothetical scenarios with you. Obviously, these hypothetical scenarios will not perfectly match your scenarios. What I want to do is just walk you through the logic of, of what I might say um, if we were meeting and looking at your own QuickBooks file. So this Bob's Burgers from January, I might say, is that a duplicate? Uh, is there, um, did you use the debit card? Did you use the credit card? Did you use... Um, a personal credit card and then it later got entered into QuickBooks but it got entered incorrectly and it should have been entered as you know money from your own account. So I would ask you to investigate look at your bank statements and just see is there any chances this is a duplicate or search in QuickBooks is this a duplicate? Did you put in $50 but really you paid them 60 because 50 was the price before tip but then you tipped them. All kinds of things could have happened. So the question is, is it a duplicate? Because it's messing up your bank balance, right? Your bank balance. This one with cool cars. Um, this is a $900 deposit from cool cars. What I can see up here is that Bill's Win and Serve Shop, um, they had a payment against their accounts receivable. If you're the type of business that creates an invoice and asks people to pay the invoice, when I see the word services here, that's a red flag to me. It tells me you've probably duplicated your income. So I would ask you to go look in your records for cool cars. Did cool cars really pay you $900 on this date? Did they pay you $900 more than once? There's a very strong chance that this is a duplicate entry. Robertson and Associates. This was a check written, check number 10, um, written in May. Seems kind of strange they haven't cashed it yet. It might be a situation where you would ask them, did you get that check? Would you like me to reissue the check? Maybe also just double check in your records and make sure you didn't enter it in there twice. This is entered as a bill payment. Possibly, maybe, you entered it as a bill payment, but then you also entered it as a check or an expense and just accidentally entered it in, into your records twice. 
Bill's Win and Surf Shop, $175 deposit from the client. Um, the client probably paid you. Like We're really good about recording when clients pay us. We're so good at it, in fact, that sometimes we double up on those payments. So it might be a situation like cool cars. Why would I encourage you to double check your records to see if Bill's Win and Surf Shop? It got this $175 payment recorded twice. I would look at your bank statement to see if you got a $175 payment and if in QuickBooks you accidentally coded it as uncategorized income. So these are kind of the steps that I walk through when I see that there's um, a difference between your online bank balance and your QuickBooks balance. I go back to the old stuff that never cleared, that never showed up on the bank statement, that never reconciled, and I just walk through the logic. Like, does this make sense? Like, is this a, a check that is going to clear later? Is this a deposit that's going to clear later? Maybe it's still sitting on your desk and you didn't realize it. Maybe the person who you wrote the check to, they're just really bad about going to the bank, but they have it and they'll, they'll cash it for sure. Or maybe they don't have it and they just need it reissued. Or maybe it's a duplicate and you just need to go through the process of fixing the duplicate. So hopefully that helps. If you need any help, really, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help you. Um, this video is just kind of a broad overview to give you a sense of how things can go sideways, how you can filter the register to identify anything that has not cleared your bank. Because if it hasn't cleared your bank, it's going to be part of the reason that these top and bottom numbers don't match. All right. Thank you so much.